So Hadith scientists are very accurate. People don't realize the hard work the scholars of Hadith have put in, in grading and classifying Hadith. Hadith are not just judged with Sahih and Daif, there's a lot more to it. Um, I don't have time to get in depth, but I'll give you guys a playlist on the Majdari Bad channel. It's called the Science of Hadith, Jay Reading Hadith Made Easy. But one thing I'll just explain, for a Hadith to be considered Sahih, you know, which is authentic, there are five conditions. Okay? So for a Hadith to be considered Sahih, it has to meet at minimum five <coughs> conditions. Okay? One of them, the chain has to be connected. Right? It's called Ittisal or Sanad. So that means from the Prophet ﷺ, till when it's written, there can be no breaks in the chain. For example, look at the Bible. There is no chain connecting Jesus or the disciples to where the manuscripts were written. Not anonymous authors. But that would never be acceptable in Hadith. Meaning each narrator, who was it that heard from each one, we have to know who they are. The chain has to have no breaks. It has a break, even if we don't know who the narrator is. We have a name, but we don't know. That's called Majhul. That's a weak narration. Then, each narrator has to have solid or good memory. So this is something that makes Hadith sciences unique. Because in history, we don't check that. Like we talk about Alexander or Julius Caesar. Even if we look at the first-hand reporters, we don't check their memory. Then, you have to have good moral character. Right? Which is called Ad. So, again, Western historians, even if you look in the scientific industry, when we do a clinical trial, the people that are involved, we don't check their moral character. We don't care if they're drunks or liars or gamblers. We don't check if, they're, if they lie regularly. But Hadith, we check. Anybody that was even accused of lying, that would be a fabricated Hadith. Mm -hmm. Even an accusation would not make it matru. If it's established that they ever lied, they would become mawdu'ah. So the hadith judging is so accurate, but that's not it. Chain is connected, good memory, good moral character. Then we have to make sure there's no contradictions. If there is something stronger that contradicts it, it's called shab. Then we don't accept it as sahih. So if there is a hadith that mentions something or an ayah in the Quran and then a hadith comes something contradictory to it, it could never be sahih. There is, this is again, this is a very deep research to done to make sure that we have a food what's protected. On top of that, on top of that, there can be no textual defects. Meaning that if there is a grammatical error, if there is a, a, a word that's been flipped, that could never be sahih. So, Imam Bukhari and Muslim, they have even more, right? To reach mutawatir, that's even more difficult. But even the base Sahih Hadith has to go through these five conditions at minimum. So if there is ever a chain with a break, it could not be Sahih. Most history we have today doesn't have a connected chain. So that means even if you took most of the history you believe in, it would not reach the level of Sahih. Everybody has to have a good memory. Even they're very good people, but they made mistakes, they flipped words, maybe they had some uh, dementia at a time in their age. We cannot accept their hadith. Everybody has a good moral character. Moral character for them, not just lying. Even if you didn't make salah in the masjid, even if you ate with your left hand, they would take you out of being not re reliable in hadith. It cannot be contradicted. People say, hadith contradicts the Quran. It cannot be. It's one of the preconditions. And if there is any grammatical, even if a word is slipped, a letter is slipped, then it would be considered to be weak. Now, if this criterion is met, whether that supports your political views or not, whether that supports your madhab, your fiqh views or not, you have to accept it. And if these are not met, you have to reject it, even if it supports your point. And that's why, what we were discussing earlier, people's biases cannot affect hadith because the science is neutral so if you look at the scholars of hadith it doesn't matter what madhab they are imam bukhari for example abu dawood being hanbali ibn hajar al dhahabi being shafi'i tahawi being hanafi ibn abdul bar being maliki never affected their hadith their fiqh is this why because in hadith we have a science that does not allow biases to play a place you would have hadith that are pro amaliyah and pro abbasiyah in the same book the rafidah they will take what they like but not the ahl of 
have a criterion that goes through just a brief introduction inshallah to a uh, science that I love. Inshallah you can follow up on more inshallah.